Hey y'all, welcome back to Texas Reloading Room. My name is Justin, and if you've heard it from me once, you've heard it from me a hundred times. Why are these so much better than these? Let's go over to the bench and take a look. If you're anything like me, especially when you're first starting out, you've asked the question, why is a hollow ground bit so much better for a firearm? And best way to start out about explaining this, some of you might, need even, might not even quite know what a hollow ground bit is. So just to very definitively illustrate the point, I'm going to go ahead and take one of my flathead hollow grounds out and compare that to a standard hardware store screwdriver. Now let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on these two. I mean, even just from here, you can probably already tell what the differences are, but let me see if I can get you closer. All right, so let me grab a pick so I can kind of illustrate some stuff here for you. This one here is our hollow ground bit, and this is a standard uh, one that you would buy at any hardware store or a Walmart or whatever. Now, this one has a magnetic tip, this one does not. That's not so important. You can get hollow ground bits with magnetic tips. However, if you look at the shape of the bit, you can clearly see it comes down and then it very definitively squares off and the reason for that is so that you can get a good full firm uh, fill out of the screw head okay and we'll look at this one you can see this one just kind of tapers all the way down it doesn't round down and then square off like the other one does and the reason that you don't want to use these is because you won't get a very good fill out of the screw head and you might get a little side to side and it will ultimately end up in you destroying the screw. It may not happen the first time, but it will eventually happen. Let's compare now the Phillips head screwdrivers. All right, so the differences on these two are not as quickly evident, but if we look really close here, this is my hologram bit. And as you can see, each of those points comes down, and once again, they square off. Um, they do have slight of an angle until they reach the apex of the curve, and then they are essentially one continuous uh, width all the way down to the termination of the point. If we look at this one, you can see those angle almost all the way down to a cone. And once again, as is the same thing with the flatheads, you will end up not getting a very good fill out of your screw, and that means you're going to have movement back and forth, and you could over time actually mess up your screws. Once again, it may not happen the first time, though I have seen that happen. Now I'm going to bring you back up and show you some examples of what a good screw fill out is versus what a bad fill out is. All right, so this is the uh, bayonet lug and front barrel band for the Type 99 Arasaka that I worked on in a recent video. And I may have mentioned that this screw here was a little bit messed up. Now the downside that we're having to these screws is that they are a little bit shallow in the heads to begin with, but it looks like somebody tried to take a regular old flathead screwdriver to these because you can clearly see how the uh, edges are not crisp and clean anymore. They've kind of been rocked back and forth a little bit and I'll show you exactly why that happens. I'm not going to actually put any force on this but I am going to use the hardware store screwdriver and put that in there. Okay, So you see how that rocks back and forth. We don't want that. But nine times out of ten, people will see, oh, it's a screw. I'm going to get a screwdriver out of my toolbox and take that apart. Well, let's 
try a, a bigger flathead screwdriver. Even a bigger, fatter flathead screwdriver is still going to rock back and forth. And you get to the point where you tear it up just enough and it'll actually start to jump out like that. And you'll destroy your screw head so bad that you can only turn it one way. And I've seen that happen to more than one screw. So if we take our hollow ground bits here, what I am actually going to do, and I can look at the screw and tell you which one that I'll need right away, but I'll start with the smallest one. Okay. It fills out better, but it's still not quite there. I want one that's going to fill up as much of the space, not only this way, but this way. So I'll grab the next one. It's better. There's nowhere near as much uh, movement side to side, but I've still got a bit of the screw head that I could fill out. So we'll go another one up. Once again, this one is almost a complete and perfect fit, but I've still got a little bit of motion, and part of that may be due to the fact that the screw head was already damaged, but I'm going to go one more up just to see if this one's going to give us what we need. Okay, see? There's, there's almost no motion at all, and this one fills out the screw head completely. This one's even tighter. You can see I'm not moving it at all, but I'm turning. I'm giving it what I've got with my hands. Let me shift it down a little bit further, and I'll show you a screw head that is in much better shape. This is the screw that's holding the uh, rear barrel band on close to the action. And... It does look like somebody tried to get after this one a little bit, but it's still nowhere near as bad. Now, I can pick up my largest flathead from the hardware store and put that in there. And I don't get a whole lot of lateral motion, and that's not bad. Theoretically, you could use this to take this screw off, but I wouldn't risk it. I can still feel it moving, and it's got a lot of... Uh, the other thing you're looking at, too, is I can rock it back and forth. You don't want that to happen either. So I'm going to once again take that largest bit that I've got and put that in there. And then I'll put my, I'll put it in my screwdriver. And the bit won't rock back and forth. Now I do have a little bit of tolerance in the tool itself, but this is a very nice tight fit. And that's what we're looking for, and that's why we use the hollow ground bits. Screws in firearms are generally not set up quite like you would see a screw that you put a board on the wall with. Um, now here's a couple of Phillips head screws that are holding a butt, uh, a butt plate onto a shotgun stock. Okay. Now, I can tell right away just by looking at them that somebody's gone after these with a plain Jane hardware store screwdriver, and the results are not good. And to an untrained eye, you might not be able to see it that much, but you see how in between the cross pattern, all the edges are kind of curved around? That is the result of using the improper tool to take these screws out. And these screws, they should not be that difficult to remove. But let me take a, a quote-unquote appropriately sized hardware screwdriver and show you why that happens. This one's actually sized quite nicely, but with the way these screwdrivers are, you see we've got that movement, and if we're putting too much torque on these screws, it can actually jump out a little bit and round over like that. You've seen it. I've seen it. We've all seen it trying to take screws out with the wrong size screwdriver or whatever. I'm sure it'd be a lot easier if I just try it with this one. This one probably, yeah, see, like that. If this is the first screwdriver you grab and you're trying to take these screws out, you're just, you're wrecking your screw. So how do we solve that problem? Well, we'll take our hollow ground bits once again and we'll go to the Phillips heads. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and grab the, the largest one that I've got and we'll see if that'll fit in here. It actually does and that is a very very nice tight fit. Okay. And it turns with no problem at all. I don't have to worry about this skipping. I'm not even putting downward pressure on this. All I'm doing is turning it with two fingers and it's coming right out. And that's why it is so important that we use the proper bits for the screws that we're taking out of our firearms. Alright, so I hope that helped you understand a little bit better why I'm using these and I preach on these so much and I'm telling you to leave these in your carpenter's box out in your garage, okay? Um, screws on firearms can get expensive, especially on some of the more rare firearms where the screws are hard to find. I've heard of people paying as much as $40 for a screw, okay, and you cannot you can't even go to a dedicated fastener store like Fastenal to get these screws. They have to be made specifically for those firearms. Um, even on a modern day firearm, let's talk about uh, like a modern produced 1911 firearm for a grip screw. You're still not going to find those screws at Ace Hardware or Fastenal or Home Depot you're going to have to get those from a company like Wilson Combat or someone else who makes that specific type of screw and you're still going to pay I think last time I looked at the price on those screws they were probably right around fifteen dollars for a set maybe like ten or fifteen dollars for a set of four screws for 1911 grips so spend the ten or fifteen dollars on your hologram bits and ensure that you never have to replace your screws. Okay, let's real quick take a look at the firearms that I used in the video. The shotgun that I was talking about was actually this Savage Model 24 S-E. It's a 20 gauge 22 Magnum combo over under and we were looking at the screws that hold this butt plate on. There will be more videos about that firearm coming soon. The other firearm was this Type 99 Arasaka from 1945. This is a uh, surrender, this is a Japan surrendered firearm and I implore you, especially on firearms like this, make sure you use the proper bits. Screws for these can be hard to find if not impossible to find. Um, like this screw right here was a devil to take out and I'm really glad that I had the bits that I had otherwise this would not have come out without damaging it permanently. Um, someone tried to take this apart before I did and use the wrong tools and almost ended up destroying that screw. I'd like to find a replacement for that but honestly I'm not even sure where to look. Um, so just a real quick topic about screwdrivers, you know. It may seem like such a small thing, but in the gunsmith world, the proper screwdriver is everything. And that is probably one of the first tools that I recommend anybody go and get is hologram screwdrivers. Whether it be a bit set like I've got, or whether it be dedicated screwdrivers. There are companies out there that are making hologram screwdrivers with each bit has its own handle. So if you guys have any questions about this topic at all, Please let me know down in those comments below, and I hope you gleaned some information from this. I hope you have a better understanding of why I preach about hollow ground Brits as much as I do. And uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.